TikTok for Realtors. By the end of this video, I can guarantee you will have the complete proven formula and blueprint of how to not only properly leverage TikTok as a real estate agent, but also how to start closing multi-million dollar deals entirely free from your TikTok videos. In this video, I bring on a very special guest, Noble Board, who by the age of 22 is now using his free TikTok videos to close multi-million dollar deals, work with builders, and is now also working with large-scale investors just a year and a half after he started to continuously leverage this platform. And this video is going to blow your mind. Noah is one of the most transparent people you are ever going to meet, and he breaks down the exact videos that he's audited using data that has proven to lead to him getting clients, million-dollar listings, and developer opportunities, his exact strategy for creating relationships at scale with developers and builders and investors in order to get endless properties to film in and his exact process for creating content, his ideas, how he edits them, and every single thing you need to do in order to properly leverage TikTok, even if you're petrified of getting in front of the camera and never used the platform before. Now, two quick things before we get started. Number one, I will link his social media profiles below both his TikTok profile and his YouTube channel because he crushes it with both, which we will get into. And number two, the link to book a call with him to talk a little bit more if you would like to know how to use TikTok in your market. So without further ado, let's bring on Noah and show you how to use TikTok as a real estate agent to exponentially explode not just your personal brand, but the production and number of deals you do every year. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. And today we've got on not just a very special guest, but a returning guest that is absolutely blown up with TikTok over the last couple of years and has done it better than almost anybody that I've seen. So I'm really excited to be bringing on one of my business partners, Noah Ward, because we previously had him on our channel and he was just in the beginning. It was building momentum, you know, fast forward a year and a bit later, and he's doing million dollar listings, working with builders and developers and has all of these incredible opportunities coming directly to him through TikTok. So we're going to be breaking down the blueprint. And this is one that I'm, I couldn't be more excited about. So uh, Noah, welcome back, man. What's going on? Thank you, Mike. I appreciate you having me on. And uh, I'm really looking forward to talking to you a little bit more about TikTok and sharing kind of my journey over this past year. Yeah, man, it's it's been incredible to see you grow from, you know, being probably the youngest person in our group to now, you know, basically crushing deals, even at the million, a multi-million dollar price point, working with developers at scale. It's just been unbelievable to watch your journey. So, you know, why don't you give people a little bit of a backstory in case they haven't seen that first video with you of, you know, your age, which market and what kind of got you into real estate into this point. And then we can start diving into the tactical of TikTok and, and your unique workflow process. Yeah, for sure. Most definitely. So when I first got into real estate, I was 19 years old. You know, I was originally from Wisconsin. I didn't move to Florida yet. I'm currently based in Sarasota, Florida. But right now, initially, I was 19 years old. I was in Wisconsin. I got my floor or got my Wisconsin real estate license, but I didn't do anything with it because I knew I was moving down to Florida. And so I was like, all right, so I'm moving to a completely new city, completely new state, don't know anyone, have no sphere of influence and don't really know the geography of the area. And you know how people majority say like, oh, when you first get into real estate, tap into your contacts and your SOI. Well, I basically had none of that because I didn't have one friend here in Sarasota. So I was left like, well, where should I go? Do I do door knocking? Do I do cold calling and all that? But at the end of the day, that just that just wasn't the way that I wanted to go, which is why me and you partnered up because you got you guys leveraged a lot of video, you know, video content, stuff like that. And I really wanted to leverage more of that social media and video content. So ultimately, that is what I did. I moved down to Sarasota and I just started diving into video and just focused on video. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to focus on any door knocking, cold calling, any of that. So I really dove in. I focused on, all right, all right. So what platforms do I really want to use? And at the end of the day, I came up with two, which was YouTube and TikTok. Now, at, at the time, TikTok wasn't, you know, too familiar in the business space. A lot of people thought it was still just a dancing app. But I was like, hey, I'm going to give it a try because I see that there's a lot of potential for this app. You know, a lot of people haven't hopped on. So it's kind of more of an early adopter at that point. And it still is a great opportunity right now. And ever since then, you know, we... I went through your training and everything like that to actually figure out what video ideas, how I should produce the videos, both YouTube and TikTok. And I replicated the same exact thing you taught for your YouTube, but then just replicated it into a short form 30 second video for TikTok. And that's ultimately where I've seen most of my success. I think, 
90 to 95% of my deals in the past 12 months have all come from YouTube and TikTok. But what's really interesting about that is that the majority have come from TikTok, but then it, through the funnels of going to TikTok, then to YouTube, then to Instagram to verify me, you know, it, it all comes from those three channels, in my opinion. But yeah, so since then, last in the past 12 months, I closed about $7 million um, in deals just from TikTok and YouTube alone. And then I had some referrals on to the side. Yeah, it's, it's incredible because I was just browsing your channel uh, last night in, or your profile rather on TikTok and, and you've got a ridiculous amount of videos with over 100,000 views, multiple, you know, six figure views. And it's unbelievable because also I think one of the things people need to understand is you're absolutely crushing with TikTok, but you don't have like hundreds of thousands of followers. You've got a really solid following. But the quality of your following, I think, is what matters, because when you look at the fact that all of your videos are Sarasota based or, in essence, Fort Myers and some of the surrounding areas, it, it allows you to make a lot more instead of focusing on the vanity metrics. Yours are like quality potential relocation buyers, sellers. And I know that you work with a lot of investors, builders and Airbnbs. So I think it's really cool that you, you're getting the traction, but with the right people. I think that is lending itself, uh, in my, my assumption, to the content you're putting out. Exactly. Yeah. So when I did it, I was like, hey, you know, all these quote unquote TikTokers and all these people that have hundreds of thousands, millions of followers, they're targeting a whole entire country. They're targeting the whole entire world. But my whole thing was I wanted to build a tight knit community and just focus solely on Southwest Florida. And then maybe some videos extend out uh, into the general state of Florida. And that's kind of where I've kept my profile is specifically Southwest Florida, and then sometimes expanding on on the Gulf Coast in that area, but really just staying hyper local into the Sarasota area. And I was like, I, I came to terms with like, hey, I'm not going to reach a huge amount of audience because it's very hyper local, but yet I still am going to create a tight knit community. So I don't care if I have four, nearly 40,000 followers. I just know that they are all either interested in Sarasota or looking into the Sarasota real estate market. It's that and clear because I don't make any other video. So that's, that's kind of what you bring up is even though I don't have a huge following, it's just a really tight knit community, in my opinion. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think, you know, we'll get to the conversion afterward because I really like what you've done with the links and things like that and where you're driving traffic to be able to pre-validate you. Um, but let's talk a little bit about that content that you're putting out because a lot of the videos that you're putting out have a similar structure and they're really engaging. They suck you in. And but they are very market specific. You're not dancing around doing all these trends and making a fool of yourself like you genuinely are providing a ton of value with comparisons and tours and things like that. So based on your experience and looking at, you know, the millions and volume that you're doing every year from TikTok, what are the videos that you recommend people doing in order to, you know, get clients based on what you've been able to get clients with? Yeah. So over the past 12 months, I actually audited my profile to see. So I went through all the content that I've created in the past 12 months and I figured out, I looked at what was, what performed the best and what didn't perform as good. Right. So I created a spreadsheet. I numbered it all down, but at the end of the day, what it came out to be was the most successful videos had came into three different buckets and it was one property tours. And that was, I wasn't even in those property tours. It was just me showing the property, but yet I was doing either a voiceover or I just had music overlay, just depending on the specific video. So that was one bucket of content that I've been really focusing on is just the house tours because that draws people in because they want to see what does $500,000 get you in Sarasota. And then I also did the green screen effect where I was like, the biggest thing for me was I didn't want to travel to all these different places, you know, spend that much time out driving because here I'd be spending hours and hours a day just driving around to different areas. So I wanted to be a little bit simpler. So I would stay in the office. I would do the green screen effect on TikTok. And then I would knock out 30, 45 videos, whatever that may be in a day. Then I have a month's worth of content or maybe if I want to post twice in a day, whatever that may be. But what I, what I found out with the green screen was the videos that helped me do the best for the green screen was like the top three attractions in Sarasota or the top three coastal cities in the Southwest Florida or the Southwest region of Florida or something in like the top three, top three restaurants, top three beaches, whatever that may be. So that was another bucket of content that I really was focusing on. Right. And then the other one was I still use, you know, the general green screen effect, but what I did was I did comparison. So I found mm -hmm. that like, Sarasota versus Fort Myers. Here are the top three differences between the two are Sarasota versus Naples, Sarasota versus Tampa, whatever that may be. 
those got very um, high views. And the reason I think it was, was because it's very debatable. It's yeah. these topics are very debatable. There's not one right answer, even though I sway more towards Sarasota the whole time. <laughs> However, it's very debatable. A lot of people are like, oh, well, Tampa's way better than Sarasota. Sure, it's a personal opinion, but it's still something that people get engaged with the content. And I think that's also something that I found very useful was kind of creating a little controversial topics, you know, something that's not completely a lie, but just make it a little bit controversial so that people start commenting and then it, the algorithm picks it up to get more views. Yeah, 100%. Like, I think when there's some sort of bias involved in it, it excites that engagement. And a lot of people are going to make the assumption, well, what if people are complaining or negative comments? It's like, when you look at these platforms, if it gets comments, that's all that matters, good, bad, or ugly. Like, it's going to help your video to get in front of more people, which is going to thus attract more good quality comments and things like that. So I think it's really powerful that you've been able to look at the data to do a lot of the talking for you in, in the sense of the videos that are working. Now, looking at the process of your videos, I think this is going to be important before we dive into like how you're actually converting and then what it's been able to do to help you um, and, you know, getting some of these partnerships. But, you know, looking at your process, what is that like from recording 30 to 45 videos? How often are you posting? Are you using any apps to edit it? Are you doing natively in the platform? And how are you coming up with like the video ideas in itself? Yep. Yeah. So, so initially we'll start from the beginning. So how I came up with all the video ideas and stuff like that. So initially when I first got started, I used a lot of like answer the public or a lot of these other, another thing was like going on Google and then typing in like, um, moving to Sarasota. And then if you type on Google and you scroll down just a little bit, it says frequently asked questions yeah. and then it comes up and then you click on one and then it gives you like five other ones. Right. And I kept going down that rabbit hole was like, all right, so these are all the video topics I'm going to start creating, right? So that basically gave me a lot of the, the basic content that I wanted. And then, for example, like, say they were like, okay, if a frequently asked question was like Sarasota versus Naples, then I'd be like, okay, I'm going to create a video on Sarasota versus Tampa there. And then I just kept going all around the different cities near Sarasota. And I had five, seven, 10 different videos just from that one little question that was asked, right? So those two things, answer the public and Google and those frequently asked questions, that's where I got all my video ideas um, for the majority part. And then once I had the video ideas written down, everything, then I went through. And then what I did was I keep my videos relatively short, under 30 seconds, and I try to. So what I do is just make three major points, right? So I come up with three major points of each video, and then I actually list them on a sticky note, for example. So I have... 30, 45 different sticky notes of each video topic. And then I go through and write three important points for that specific video. Then once I have all that taken care of, then what I'll do is I'll set up all my cameras, set up my green or my, uh, my ring light, my audio and everything like that. And then I'll just grab each sticky note, look at what I need to, what video I'm going to be producing. And then from there, then I just batch that content and I sit there for five, six hours, you know, batching out all that content, editing it at the end of the day. Yeah. Definitely. And are you natively editing it within the platform or are you using something like, um, you know, InShot or CapCut or anything like that? Yeah. So if I use the green screen effect, I use everything native into the TikTok app, everything like that. All the green screen effects that I use on my on my profile are all native into TikTok. And then if I'm doing house tours or if I'm going out in Sarasota and checking out some local attractions, whatever that may be, I'm going to edit that in a third party InShot Pro. And then I'll add my text overlays there, or after I edit it in InShot, then I will also add that into CapCut to do with the automated captions. Yeah, 100%. Because I think a lot of people are looking for ways to streamline that. And they kind of assume that you need to hire somebody or pay somebody money to do it. But looking at these apps, it'll basically take care of the majority of the heavy lifting for you. Now, you know, before getting into some of the, the stuff that you've been able to do with actually converting, because a lot of people are curious, like without a lot of like ease of DMs and things like that on TikTok, a lot of people are curious about the conversion strategy. But one of the things that people are genuinely curious about is, you already alluded to the fact that property tours do very well. And I've seen them, you know, even the first three pinned posts on your TikTok profile are property tours with hundreds of thousands of views. And it really is simple in nature because you're just using your iPhone and walking around. However, one of the things a lot of people are curious about is how do you actually get properties to go film in, in order to continue to do more volume of property tours? 
Right, for sure. So what we do, so here in Sarasota, we're very fortunate that we're, uh, there's a lot of new construction communities going on here um, in the area. So what I'll do is I'll just go to a new construction community with one of these larger production builders here, and they have five or seven different model houses. So I'll go through and then I will record all seven of those. That way I have seven days of content right there. And then I'll go hit up a new community, another community, right? However, at the end of the day, those get exhausted. I mean, those basically get exhausted. Those options are done. You only can record those so many times, right? So then, it, then it's going to the next step is actually then going to find other house builders that aren't building in these communities and saying, hey, you know, I see that you built this house on one, one, two, three Main Street, you know, or do you have any other houses that you're building, right? And they're like, oh yeah, I'm building this one right now. It's not on the market. I'm like, cool. Do you mind if I take a video of this property that you're doing or 10 of them that you're building right now? And they're like, yeah, no problem. So then, then that builds that connection with that builder. And I still go in there, right? Because if I, the biggest thing is building relationships, because this is what I found is that, you know, Sarasota, the demographic of agents is relatively older, so they're not as uh, prevalent on video. So they don't understand that, you know, how important camera is, right? So I got a lot of no's at the beginning from a lot of these older listing agents, and it, which is perfectly fine. It was, it was a numbers game at that point. But what I figured out is to create strategic partnerships with other listing agents, um, have conversations with them, build relationships so that if not only they have a listing, but their friends in their office also have a listing, then they're like, hey, Noah, we have a listing coming up. Do you want to come and shoot that? And I'll say, yeah, I'll come and shoot that, right? So at the end of the day, it's all about those building those relationships. If you don't have a lot of builders in your area, it's just building a relationship with one agent to then get a bunch of agents in their office. Yeah, it makes complete sense. I think a lot of people approach um, the the videos in a sense of trying to get these property tours in a very selfish way, which is like they'll reach out to Noah and be like, Hey, Noah, can I come record a video in your property? And, and a lot of times that is perceived as selfish in the sense of, of course, you want to come create a video here. You just want to get content for yourself. But when you can start to build those relationships and explain, Hey, all that I'm doing is using my time and my effort to get more exposure on your property. Now it becomes this mutually beneficial exchange of value, which is really, really important. I think that's a, a good segue into how you're actually converting traffic, because I see that you've been able to very strategically through the evolution of your profile, use different links in your bio, and also the importance of being able to connect Instagram and YouTube and see that you're active across the board and you're not just a one-stop shop or one trick pony. You know, what does that look like for you from views to actual conversations and then appointments and then deals? Right, exactly. So what I've done is because TikTok, you know, a lot of people still think it's, you know, there's not much business happening on TikTok. It's a dancing app, so which is completely fine by me. But what I've figured out is that, you know, people are going to see you on TikTok, right? My whole thing is cast a huge net with all the videos that I post on TikTok, get a huge net. But then once they, once they come into my ecosystem, they're like, hey, you know, I want to check out if he's legit or not. I have my link to my uh, custom website that I built. And then I also have it linked to my YouTube and my Instagram. So what happens is that I've I've actually asked my clients, past clients, I'm like, hey, how have you found me? And they're like, well, we went from your TikTok. Then we went to go check out your YouTube because you have that link there. And then we saw all the long form videos you had there. You saw that, you know, you were out in the public, you know, a lot. You, you seem well versed in the Sarasota real estate market. And then we checked out your Instagram and saw that, you know, you're posting daily on your stories, whatever that may be. And they're like, hey, well, it seems like you're very active in the community and everything that we wanted to work with you. And that's that was the common denominator with all the clients that I've worked with is that's basically how they found me as TikTok, then to YouTube and then to Instagram, basically just to verify me because they're like, okay, he could be fake on TikTok, right? But he can't be fake on YouTube and Instagram all at the same exact time. So that is what I've found to be the most helpful is kind of create a quote unquote funnel for that. But then I also have had my phone number posted in my bio as well. So I get a lot of people that text me and say, hey, I found you on TikTok or hey, I found you on TikTok. Then I looked at your YouTube, whatever that may be. And then we have a conversation from there because the majority of mine actually come from just they text me out of the blue. They're like, hey, yeah. I want, you know, I want to talk to you about buying a house or I want to talk to you about selling my property. And then I ask them about it. And then they're like, well, we found your number on TikTok. 
Yeah, it makes complete sense. And I think that omnipresence is really important to be able to, again, validate what you're doing across multiple mediums, because you are ranking for multiple markets on YouTube as well. And I think that's really cool, because I find TikTok is, you know, more volume play, you've got YouTube, which is very powerful for SEO and ranking. And then you've got Instagram, which is great for kind of like, uh, behind the scenes, if you will, of getting people to know like the actual you with your stories and keeping up on a daily basis with that. You know, before we kind of bring things full circle with with mistakes and best practices on TikTok, how are you incorporating YouTube into this mix in terms of, you know, how often are you posting on TikTok? How often are you posting on, on YouTube? And is there a, a connection between the content you're doing on both? Or what does that relationship look like between the two platforms? Yeah, for sure. So, so TikTok is a very short form platform, 30 seconds or less. TikTok is more longer form, five to 11 minutes. Somewhere around there is kind of where I keep my videos. And so there is kind of a relation between them. Now, not so much with the green screen because I don't do the green screen on YouTube. However, when I'm doing property tours, for example, with my iPhone, you know, going um, to do them for TikTok, I'll also have my other camera that I'll do uh, horizontal content for YouTube at that same exact time. So I'll post a longer form video of a walkthrough of that same exact house that I did on TikTok that was just sped up for 30 seconds, right? So I'll post some of that same content. But at the end of the day, what I also do with my YouTube is basically talk about uh, like, here are the top three things when you're looking to buy land in Northport, Florida, which is just south of Sarasota. I'll actually be out in Northport and I'll actually walk through the property to show people. But then on TikTok, I'll just say, here are the top three things to watch out for when you're buying land. And I stay in the exact same spot wherever I am. And I just talk about the top three topics, right? So a lot of my content is very similar. It's just my YouTube is a lot longer form and my TikTok is a lot shorter form. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and you know, you've obviously thrived in, and it's been pretty incredible to see some of the other relationships that you've got. So I'd love to quickly just touch on that before kind of bringing it full circle with these mistakes and best practices. But can you talk to people about what this has actually done for your business in terms of the connections that it's allowed you to, to create and the price points that you're now able to work with and the volume of, of what you're actually doing and developments and all of this incredible stuff? Right. Yeah. So I think the biggest thing to come out of this TikTok, which I never honestly would have thought in a million years that this would have happened in this short period of time. But what happened was, long story short, was I built up a following on TikTok, hyper local here. And then I had other people reach out to me. They were like, hey, you know, I want to sit down and have a meeting with you and talk with you. So I had other agents reach out to me, talk with me. Then I had other people come out and talk with me as well. And then I also had other connections that are like, hey, you know, you'd be perfect. You should talk to this guy, this so-and-so guy, right? And uh, then that's led to different relationships and relationship building. But after that, showing what I have done on my TikTok, showing how many views I can get, showing the volume that I've done, showing the kind of clientele that I work with, I've had builders actually approach me to work with them. And I've actually partnered with one private builder here and we create a development company to build custom houses and spec houses for investors. So that's been eight months in the making, whatever that may be. And we're currently building two custom houses right now um, with our development company. And that's also led to now people are like, hey, we see what you're doing with this builder. You wanna come and do it with us, right? So it's a whole big web that's been going on and a lot of connections. And I say that this whole video thing has brought a lot of relationships and not just transactions together because sure, this one person that reached out to me from TikTok, he may not be a success for me. However, the people that he knows is going to be the success for me. So he introduces me to these hedge fund people that know these hedge fund investors on the East Coast. And then they want to start building houses at scale, five plus houses a month at scale, and they need a builder and they need someone that's going to sell those houses as well. So being able to partner with a private builder myself, me take care of the sales and the marketing, we kind of create a duo that we offer to these individual either builders or individual investors or individual hedge funds as well. So now that has led to a lot of different stuff. Now we have a lot of stuff in the pipeline in terms of building houses, but I just want to go back and say all this came from video. This didn't come from anything else. It just came through strategically building relationships and business partnerships with people like creating, creating a video for a local business. And they're like, Hey, I want to introduce you to this person. Right? So then it all cascades. It's a huge cascading effect. And it's not just about one single transaction. It's about more relationships down the line. 
I think that's one of the biggest takeaways that a lot of people don't properly understand. I think it's also a testament to your maturity and, and your, you know, approach to this whole initiative, which is that a lot of people are looking for that instant gratification. I'm going to do tech talk. And if it doesn't give me a deal within three months, then it's not worth it. Whereas your mentality and your approach, which has led to ridiculous success in a short period of time is I don't care when I'm going to get the deal. I care about the relationships I'm going to build because over time, if I'm consistent with this, the deals will come. And I think right. that is a, a good kind of, you know, bridge to the next thing that is really important is what are some of the mistakes that you've seen people make when approaching TikTok that are maybe not getting traction or maybe not getting relationships or the expectations that they have in terms of tangible outcomes from their TikTok content? Right, exactly. So I feel like setting expectations is the biggest thing. You're not going to get a deal within the first 30 days. Now you might, I'm not saying it is, but realistically, it's not. It's all about going to be building out your content and being consistent. And I tell people, because I have agents approach me here locally and say, well, how are you able to grow this following here? Because I can't. And it's like, and I tell them, all it, it's one simple thing. It comes down to being consistent, you know, being consistent on a daily basis. I'm posting one time a day on TikTok and I'm posting once a week on YouTube, going to twice a week on YouTube. And it just comes down to that because I see a lot of agents, they come up to me and they're like, hey, I've been trying TikTok. I've been doing these short form videos for two weeks now and I haven't gotten any traction. Why are you getting traction? And I'm saying, well, because I'm being consistent and I'm doing things in the right in the right order, and I'm not expecting results right away. That's the biggest thing is when you try to expect results like a month down the road, you're just going to get discouraged, right? So you have to set proper expectations up front. Like for example, I know TikTok is not going to produce me multi-million dollar deals every single week. Like for example, my biggest deal that I did from TikTok was about a two, two and a quarter million dollar house. And that wasn't directly for the buyer. That was the buyer's manager that found me on TikTok. Now we're going to be listing his house for $3.5 million here in about March. And so that came from TikTok, but setting the proper expectations, I think is honestly the biggest thing. And the biggest mistakes that I made were expecting return, expecting yeah. everything in return right away. Right. And I, I initially at a younger age, I was like, well, you know, I should just be able to get all these deals because I'm putting out all this content. I deserve this. Right. It's like, yeah. I deserve this because I'm doing this much work. But at the end of the day, it's the, it's the quality of content that you put out. And what I did was I took every video that I did was a building experience. So I took comments that people were like, Hey, they commented something. So I improved on it, or I create a video around this. And after 12 months coming full circle, this is when I become dialed in for what my audience is exactly looking for and what I'm going to create in terms of what kind of camera I'm using and all that kind of stuff. Um, but like I said, the biggest mistake that people set can do is not being consistent on a daily basis and then also just setting improper expectations. Completely. And, and I think, you know, one of the things that I love, and I can see this is so clearly, and it really reminds me of my own journey, which is that, you know, just from the beginning of your TikTok journey to where you're at now, you can see how much you've grown in terms of your communication skills, your delivery, your confidence, your ability to articulate messages, and all of these kind of incredibly beneficial, tangible things that might not be tangible in the immediate in terms of direct income in your bank account, but what that yields long term in terms of your ability to interact, convert, negotiate and drive traffic is worth its weight in gold. Like that's a multi million dollar a year skill set to have that has probably come from the frequency of videos. And I think that's almost an accelerated path because for me to do, you know, I've done about 400 videos on my YouTube channel, but that's been five years. You've done way more than that in a fraction of the time because of the cadence of TikTok. And I think that's a really cool thing, knowing that communication is the number one skill in real estate. You have accelerated the growth of that skill set, like at, at an extra, uh, you know, exponential pace. Exactly. And, you know, in the past year, I know that my speaking has grown quite a bit. And my, the biggest thing is my confidence has come up yeah. because the biggest thing is, you know, being 19 years old, getting into real estate, I didn't know a lot of stuff, right? So I had a lot of 
uh, doubts in myself, had a lot of second doubts when people would ask me a question. I didn't quite know it. However, creating these videos and creating videos on a daily basis provides me more education. I look at it as every video I do is educational, not only for my cut, not only for my audience, but also for me, because I actually learn something every time I do a video, whether that be how I speak, how I present stuff, how confident I am, or even just the information that comes out of the video. Like I've gained so much knowledge in the building aspect when I start div diving into it and creating videos on each individual aspect of the building process now i can easily articulate to a customer each step of the building process and they're like you're only 22 years old now and i'm so <laughs> surprised because a lot of builders don't even know you know the exact they can't properly articulate sure they can build an amazing house but at the end of the day they can't properly articulate what we want to do and how the building process is so at the end of the day we're not going to go with him as a builder you know yeah for sure, for sure. And, and, you know, kind of pulling things full circle, like somebody's, there's going to be many people, not just somebody, but many people that watch this video and they're saying, okay, you know, time to get out of my own head, time to take action on TikTok. Um, and this is going to be my year where I'm actually going to start to be consistent with it. What are your best practices or piece of advice for people that are just getting started in, in order to maybe point them in the, the right direction based on your journey? Yep, exactly. So my biggest advice would be, done is better than perfect. So the biggest thing is you cannot just go out and expect like, oh, I'm going to create this perfect 4k video and spend it like an hour on a TikTok video because you're not going to be able to create the volume. If you are specifically focused on how you speak or like, if you're like, oh, well, I don't really like this part of myself on this video. My biggest thing is just get yourself on video and get creating content. That's the simplest thing. You only get better with the amount of videos that you create. You cannot look at one video and say, I'm not gonna, I'm, I don't look good in this video, I'm not gonna post it. Because if you look back at my content a year and a half ago, it was absolute, it was terrible, right? And I've actually scrolled back to look at it and how things have progressed. So my biggest thing is just get yourself on video. Done is better than perfect. The more frequency you do on video, the better you will be. Sure, you'll get negative comments. However, you just know that you're doing it for the greater good. And you know that at the end of the day, if you get negative comments, I look at it as, you know, I'm doing something right. Because if someone's commenting something negative about me, whatever that may be, I just brush it off because I know that something's irritating them. Whether I'm ahead of them, whatever that may be, I look at it in that respect, not look at it like, oh, well, poor me, right? So I think the biggest thing is just get yourself on video, be consistent on a daily basis. If you're going to do it for about a month, I wouldn't even do it at all. Find something that you're going to be consistent in. Find something that you'll actually enjoy doing. Because if you don't enjoy doing something, you're not going to be able to do it for the long haul. 100%. And I think a lot of people, again, get in their own head because of self esteem and limiting beliefs and all these kind of self sabotaging behaviors, and that hinders their ability to take action. And all of our videos are trash in the beginning. So they might as well be trash now instead of a year from now as you continue to delay because video is inevitable if you want to thrive, especially as things start to, you know, elevate and advance in terms of technology. So, you know, the last thing is, I think there's a pretty incredible opportunity here because you've obviously, you know, done wonders with TikTok and I've done my thing with YouTube. And the really cool thing is that people have the ability to partner with us in order to get your help on TikTok, my help on YouTube and every other, you know, platform with branding and things like that. What does it look like for people that are looking to, you know, partner with somebody like you that's going to help take their TikTok to that next level and actually be able to get tangible results from the content that they're putting out? Right, exactly. So, you know, if you are looking to partner with us, the biggest thing is my thing is I want to help people grow. You know, I want to help them take them from zero followers to 10,000 followers, whatever that may be, whatever your goal is, I want to be there to help you achieve that. Since I've already walked that fine line, I want to be that stepping stone to be that, you know, phone call away for you or whatever that may be to answer any questions that you may have to help you get to where you want to be on video. Because at the end of the day, my whole business is surrounded from video and I don't know what I would, where I would be without video. And so I want to be able to help other agents that are struggling a little bit, be able to help them get on video and help them prosper for their business.
it makes complete sense. And I think I'm sure you can kind of echo this, which is like, you know, I found that I did so many things wrong in the beginning on YouTube and every platform for that matter, that now when people partner with us, we can almost help them accelerate that growth by shortening the learning curve and avoiding all the mistakes that you and I both made in the beginning on various platforms. And now, you know, we have people like yourself and many others in the group that are, you know, doing way better than I did on YouTube in their first year. And now you're able to share that experience and I think that's what a lot of agents need is the ability to work with somebody that is not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. Because there's a lot of people out there talking about TikTok for realtors. They've never sold a home or they barely sold any. And you, they, you want to be aligning with a practitioner in a sense. So um, any final words, Noah, for people that uh, are going to, you know, how to reach out to you or anything else like that? Yep. Yeah. So if you guys want to reach out with any other questions, whatever that may be, the bit, the best way to reach out to me is my Instagram. Just shoot me a DM. Um, it's Noah dot underscore ward. Um, if you want to reach out to me there, that's my best place. That's why I answer all my DMs every single day. And if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me there. If you want to partner with us, feel free to reach out to me there. That's my best communication platform. I love it. Well, thank you so much again for pouring into, uh, you know, this community and, and sharing so much in this video. You know, you're genuinely one of the most transparent, authentic people that we have the blessing to work with. And, and I'm just so proud of everything that you've done. So uh, guys, make sure to take action again as Echo uh, by Noah. Done is better than perfect. And I uh, can't wait to see some of your TikTok videos. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.